welcome learner let us know something about the temple art and architecture during 8th century to 12th century in ancient india temples you know all know in the abode of gods and goddesses and hindus particularly they built it for a long time this is a place of worship Previously, in the earliest time, most of the temples before the Guptas were rock-cut temples. That means they were hewn out of the caves. They are little elaborated, and then the altar is created at the back, at the end of the square area, and the image of God is kept on that altar. During the Gupta age, structural temple started to build. Now, let us first know the different type of temples of India, and later we will know how these temples were decorated or ornamented by the sculptors and the painters. There were actually three types of Indian temples. In the south, we call it Nagara style of temples. Though the Nagara temples have a typical quality, those who live in the northern side of India, they must have noticed these characteristics of the Nagara style. This is the Shikhara, this is the top, and this is called Bhimana. Inside the Bhimana, there is a place where the image of God is kept. Adjacent to this, there is another structure. We call it Mandapa. Mandapa is particularly built for those who come here to worship or pray to the God. So here is some area where they sit and meditate or pray to God. Now for northern Indian temples or the Nagara style, very important thing is to decorate all the sides of the temples. Sometimes some part of the inner side are also decorated with some sculptures and painting. So, this is the typical structure of the Nagara style of North. Nagara style mostly developed in Odisha. The most beautiful structures of Nagara temples we see in Odisha in the shape of Lingaraj temple and Konarak temple and etc. These temples are highly decorated with the sculptures. They are very much popular all over the world, especially the sculptures of Konarak. Now, it is very important to learn in which areas of these temples are sculptures are kept. Odishan Nagara style of architecture always make a resemblance with the human figure. As the human figure has a head, a torso and legs, same way they imagine that the temple structure has also these three components of human body. Mastaka, the upper part, the torso part is called Gandhi and the lower part is called Jangha. Now in the upper part, two important components are the finial or they call it ayudha and this uh, pillow like form, the cushion like form is called kalasha. The Indian sculptors of the temples, they prefer whole this area for their sculptures because there are a lot of niches and corners which is completely decorated with beautiful sculptures of human body 
and also animal figure and other things. And the lower part is Jangha. One is upper Jangha and the lower Jangha. Both of these are also very beautifully decorated by Nagara style of sculptures. Now, this style of Nagara, it spread all over India from the Himachal to eastern side, Assam, Bengal, Bihar. Now we'll come to the next style of architecture that is called Dravida. The Dravida style of architecture which developed in the South India. The Pallavas, especially Narasingha, Burman, he was one of the great admirers of art and architecture. During this period, he ordered to build few models for architecture in Mahabalipuram, which was their capital. This area also known as Mamallapuram. They are very famous for Pancharatas. Actually, they carved out of single stone and they are known as Dharmaraja Ratha, Arjuna Ratha, Ganesha Ratha, Draupadi Ratha, etc. Anyway, two of the structures are very important for the development of Dravida form of architecture. That is the Dharmaraja Ratha. You can see on a square base on the wall, there is a pyramidal shaped Bhimana. That means the Shikhara upper part. There are three forced steps and these are always beautifully decorated with some face or other decorative elements. The other one, the Ganeshadath, which is rectangular or barrel shape and on the top we can see again a barrel shape form here. So this is very important for the development of Dravid architecture for this reason. In the later period, we will see how these things developed in Dravid architecture. Here I can see the, the Jyutishti Ratha or the Dharma Rajara that we have seen in Mahabalipuram was enlarged and given the perfect shape of the temple. There are three segments in the Dravida architecture instead of two segments of the Nagara style. Here you see the Biman in the style of the Dharma Rajarath and in the middle in the very uh, and under the canopy there are the goddess images and then the mandapa or there is some time in between there is one smaller mandapa which is called Ardha mandapa. The devotees or the prayer they enter through this and ultimately they come to the sanatorium sanctum. Now Dravida architecture has a typical quality. They are almost like a fortress. The main structure of the temples in the middle of the compound and it is surrounded with sometimes two and three wall all over the compass. This temples or the Bhimana is surrounded with walls in the all four sides, east, west, north and south. There are four gates in the four sides which is known as Gopuram. Gopuram structure is actually the enlargement of the combination of this Dharmarajarath and also that of the Ganesharath. Here you can see the this one is like the Dharmarajarath. But while the main temple is shorter, not very high, while the Gopuram was very high in, uh, the, in its appearance. 
on the top we see the barrel form of the Ganeshadath here. So the Gopuram are sometimes 4, sometimes 8 and also sometimes 12 in their appearance. Now the decoration of this Gopuram absolutely mind blogging. The sculptor not only carved these sculptures on the every steps of the Gopuram, but also they are beautifully colored. The main Bimana is not very much decorated, but in some temples they are also very much decorated with sculpture. Some of the Dravidian architectural temples are beautifully decorated with sculptures. For example, the temple of Brihadashvara in Tanjivar is all source of our classical dance. Actually, the dance Bharatanatyam is revived from those sculptures that is ornamented all over the Janghas or the side of the Brihadashvara temple. So in the next stage will come another form of architecture that is Besara. Besara is a combination of Nagara and Dravida. This architectural structure is like the uh, in the shape of the Kailash Nath mountain. The Kailash temple is the abode of Shiva. So all the temples in Khajuraho particularly is built in the style of Besara. You can see here the main temple is very very high and there are so many smaller structures all around the Shikhara. Then gradually lowering the height of the Mandapa and Ardha Mandapa. The base is very high and you are to go to this high with some stairs. So this style is known as Besara style which we can see in the picture here. The top, then the lower one and the lowest one and it, it is just like at the Kailash temple where Shiva supposed to be residing. Now Khajuraho, Lingaraj temple or the temple of Odisha all are beautifully decorated with sculptures. The development of architecture in ancient India, we started, I told you, special structural temple from the Gupta period, but it continued for a long time. It developed in different parts of India and different dynasties, they patronize this particular temple architecture and also the sculptures to decorate these temples. The Guptas, they built few beautiful temples with structures like an eye hole. The Ganga dynasty, they developed the style of Nagara in a different way in Orisha, in Lingaraj temple and Kanarak temple and also Rajarani temple, they are beautifully decorated. Then we see the Chandalas of central India. They built a very beautiful complex of temples in Khajuraho, which is popular worldwide. Apart from the stone or sandstone structures of these temples, we see some temples in the eastern side, they are made of terracotta tiles. 
since the lack of availability of stones, eastern side especially Bengal and Assam, they preferred to build their temples with clay brick and that is decorated with terracotta tiles. First, it is built in the form of a structure in resemblance to the thatched heart of Bengal. Interestingly, one of the Pancharathas of Mahabalipuram, which is known as Draupadirath, have the same kind of structure in the shape of thatched heart. This means that style spread even to the south from Bengal. In a way, in Bengal, especially in Bakura side, we will see these beautiful temples were built. The each tiles are not very big in size. They are sometimes 6 by 6 inches or 4 by 4 inches, were made from clay. Then they are turned into terracotta to make it permanent. And then like tiles we put on the wall, that is also actually put on the wall. There are Shiva temples, Vaishnava temples, even there are temples in the name of Durga. And the theme for Ramayana, Mahabharata and Krishna Leela also depicted on the tiles and it was decorated. Later we will see some kind of temples were built in the western side. Especially we can name the famous temple of Mount Abu, the Dilawada temple. Now by this time there are some invasion from the western side and they did not want to give exposure to these temples for the uh, fear of vandalism. So from outside it is very difficult to recognize the temple of Dilawara. The top is absolutely plain. It does not look at, at, as if that it is, there is nothing there. But when you enter, you will be surprised and mesmerized by the beautiful rock cut of your marbles. The white marbles are used to decorate the whole temples from the walls to the ceiling. The intricate designing of this Tilwara temple is still an awesome example of our ancient Indian sculptures. So learner, you see that the development of art and architecture went hand in hand in India. In one hand, the architects of the temples, they made so many experiments they gave different shape of the Nagara, Dravira and Besara style. In the same way, the sculptors of ancient India, they never tire of experimenting with their styles. So, we will find different style in northern India, in southern India, in western India and also eastern India. Here, I forget to name one more beautiful architectural, uh, <coughs> sorry, repeat. Uh -huh. Here I should have mentioned another beautiful rock cut temples of Elora in Maharashtra. Rastakuta built this beautiful rock cut structure in Elora. A hill was curved from the top to bottom and built two-storied temple which is known as Kailasnath Temple of Elora. You can see here that how whole thing has been carved out of a hill and given the shape beautifully. Not only that, only the shape of the architecture. Every part of the Kailasnath Temple is beautifully curved 
with sculptures. One of the most famous of the sculpture is Mahishasura Martini. So, learners, we have seen that how the different kind of works of art and architecture were developed in ancient India. I hope you have enjoyed these visuals and it will inspire you to go further to learn about Indian art and architecture that were developed during 8th century to 12th and 16th century. Thanks for the listening of this video.